Good morning, Melanie. I just arrived to your hospital room. I don't see you around. I brought a change of clothes. Everything okay? Is there something you want me to take back home with me? Like laundry or something? Oh, hey, Mom. Yeah, actually there is. There's a bunch of laundry in the closet near the door. Get those washed, would you? All right, no problem. Oh, and Melanie, there's one more thing. Yeah? Oh, what is it? You and the baby are scheduled to come home the day after tomorrow, right? Yes, that's right. Why do you ask? Well, I suddenly have this urgent issue back at my parents' place, and I won't be home for a few days. So I asked my son to take the afternoon off the day after tomorrow to pick you up by cab. Hope that's okay. Oh, yeah? Okay, so Rob is gonna pick me up, huh? No problemo. No problemo? Oh, <laughs> yes, I get it. I really feel awful about it. No worries, I'll be fine. Actually, I'm sorta of thankful. Excuse me? Ah, uh, <laughs> never mind. Hey, Mom. Weren't you supposed to be back from your folks' place about now? Yes, that's right. I should be home in about an hour or so. Oh, yeah? You don't have to come home. Oh, wait. Pardon me? After your husband died, your son Rob and I live in the main house. And you live in the attached cottage out back, right? Yes, that's right. What about it? Since I'm alone... I prefer the smaller house. Less to clean, it's actually quite comfortable. Although we live on the same property, we made it a rule that we would not interfere with each other's lives. I see. Then it's decided. Please vacate that cottage, please. Excuse me? But why do you say that? Seems obvious, right? After your husband passed away, the house was handed down to Rob, who's your only son. So, I figured, since I am Rob's wife, I have the authority to determine who lives here and who doesn't. Makes perfect sense, right? And, what's more, I just gave birth to a healthy young boy who will next take over this property someday. So, simply put, I surpass you as the authority figure here. I make the decision about this family and this property. You're not making much sense, Melanie. If you can't understand, I can explain it to you again. If you'd like, I got all the time in the world. Oh, and that little cottage you're living in now? Once you're out, my folks will move in, so... I'd appreciate it if you get your stuff out of there ASAP. Thanks. I really wish you would stop making all the decisions like I didn't even exist. Considering that it would be hard bringing up a kid... It would be way easier for me to ask my folks rather than my mother-in-law. Who I hardly know. Don't you agree? Don't you agree that a stress-free environment is important for bringing up a child? For both mother and child? So, you feel that my presence is stressful. Is that what you're trying to say? Please, Mom. Don't get me wrong. It's not just about you. I just grew up thinking that, you know... That all in-laws are supposed to be a little... You know, cruel and nasty. <laughs> Does Rob feel the same way as you? I haven't asked him, but I'm sure he feels exactly the same. But I can't be persuaded to change my mind. If I can get $10,000 a month as support payment, my mind can be easily swayed. <laughs> Pardon me? $10,000? Obviously, you can't pay such a fortune, so I want you out of the cottage by the end of the day. Even if I was to leave, I still have a lot of stuff in the house. I need a few days. I bet you're just saying that, and then you're gonna squat there forever. I have other accommodations, so that won't be necessary. Are you sure about that? I remember when you first moved in, Melanie. Those huge cardboard boxes? How did you even get those boxes to the house? 
I've always wondered about that. You know perfectly well how hard it is to move. It's not as easy as packing a bag and saying goodbye. Yeah, but I really doubt you have somewhere else to live, but again, that's your problem. Okay then, I'll give you until Sunday to move out. That should be more than enough time. If you're even a day late in moving out, we cut family ties and you'll never see your grandchild ever again. <laughs> you're out of the house, like it or not. Just keep that in mind. Cut family ties, huh? I may be saying that to you sooner rather than later. Judith, is this true? Did you really move out of your own place? Good morning, Rob. Please, no need to worry about me. I'm fine. As you all know, I have other accommodations. But it seems unfair. This is your home. Yes, it is. By the sound of it, apparently Melanie hasn't mentioned anything. Melanie, did she say something to you? Yes, it was Melanie who told me to get out of the house. She seemed pretty adamant about it too. Are you joking? She told you to leave your own home. Why? I'm pretty sure I mentioned this to you before, but... I just want to make sure. She knows that we're not related. No blood ties. And that I haven't officially registered you as my child. She knows this, right? Yeah, I told her that before we even got married. She thought it was weird at first when I kept calling you Judith, but when she asked me about that, I told her that my dad brought me up as a single parent and that you and dad got married after I finished school and was already working. I also explained that since I was already an adult, I wasn't really necessary to do all the paperwork for adoption. That's what I wanted to verify. Thanks. But do you have any evidence that Melanie demanded that she leave? Yes, she contacted me online. So the whole conversation should be there, word for word. I'd appreciate it if you could send me the entire conversation. I want to get a grasp of the whole situation. Okay, I can do that. I'll send it later. Oh, and one more thing. Now that you moved out, I don't see how we can go on living here any longer. The only problem is that Melanie just got out of the hospital and is still pretty weak and needs rest. As you know, the baby is tiny. We really shouldn't be taking our son outside for now. Would you mind waiting three or so months until we're ready to move? I'd really appreciate it. Of course, Rob. How can I say no? Thank you so much, Judith. And I'm really sorry about all this. And I appreciate your considerateness. No need to apologize. I just hope things work out for you too. Or should I say three? pick up would you this is my first time hearing about this what's going on oh hello Melanie it's been a while how are you let's cut the niceties shall we why the hell do we have to move out you're the one who was supposed to get the hell out of here I finally scheduled it so that my folks would move in as a matter of fact they just terminated their apartment lease and packed their stuff what the hell is going on? What have you done? I'm sure you heard everything from Rob. He told you that the owner of the house is... me. That can't be right! When a father dies, the son takes over as heir. Rob's the only son. The house obviously goes to him. What are you... delusional? And you have to pay all kinds of taxes too. Like property and state taxes. You're just a housewife. You would never be able to pay that. Oh, I see now. That's where all misunderstandings come from. A misunderstanding? What are you talking about? For starters, I'm not a housewife. Actually, I'm an investor. Wait, excuse me? An investor? I'm not only investing in stocks, but also have considerable real estate assets too. And that house you guys are living in right now? I bought that house years ago, which is also in my name. Wait a sec, am I hearing you right? My husband's office was not far away, 
so when we married, we moved in here. It was just more convenient. After a few years, Rob got transferred to this area, so he moved in with us. The place is pretty big, so three adults wasn't a problem, and we had the cottage out back. We lived a nice, peaceful existence for years, before you arrived. So, does that mean... that the house will not be Rob's for the foreseeable future? That's where you got your wires crossed again, Melanie. About any inheritance, we decided long ago that... when my sister's child turns 30, she would inherit the house. We decided that years ago, and Rob's father was well aware of it, as Rob is. I'm surprised he didn't tell you. Are you for real? That doesn't make sense! Even if Rob is not your real child, he is nevertheless your son. You can't deny that. He has rights too. Being your son? He has way more rights and priority than some niece or nephew. I never officially adopted him as my son. Therefore, there is no inheritance involved. Although he may be perceived as my son. I don't want to sound crude, but he is actually a stranger. Uh, wait a second. So, does that mean, no matter what I do, this house will never be mine? That seems to be the case. You can't do this! No way! I won't let you do this! I already talked to Rob about all this. I'm bewildered by your reaction. I thought it was all resolved. This wasn't how it was supposed to end! We were supposed to get the house. My folks were supposed to... Am I hearing you right? Was that your intention? To somehow outright own that house? Is this what it's all about? Yeah, so what? I have no say in what you two are going to do going forward. That's for you and Rob to decide. Excuse me? I decided to move out and live at my summer home near the ocean. As for that house, I'm going to put it up for rent in the near future. Once I get the schedule figured out, I'll send you the date I will need you to move out. I would appreciate it if you get all your things packed and ready to move out by then. How did it turn out this way? What's going on? Can you at least give us that summer home? Uh... Hello, Mom. It's been a while. How have you been? Is that you, Melanie? What do you want? I hope it's not about extending your stay. I already have that place on the market. Besides, I thought we made it clear that we have to cut all ties. Cut ties? Why would we do that? Can't you see me and your grandson right outside your window on your front doorstep? Come on, Mom. Open up the front door and let us in. Pardon me? What are you talking about? Which front door stepped? Are you even at the right house? I'm looking outside the door, but I don't see anybody. You're not fooling me. One bit with that kind of play-acting, Mom. I did a little checking up on you, like where you moved. Pardon me? You checked up on me. Remember a few months back? You were talking about moving to your summer house back east, near the ocean. Now that has to be the ritzy area near Hamilton Beach, right? I did a thorough check on that place. I checked every address around the area and finally tracked you down. Hamilton Beach? I don't live in Hamilton Beach. Where'd you get that idea? Uh huh? Oh, wait, what? There are plenty of other areas that have wonderful beach resorts all up and down the East Coast. I never said I had a summer home in the Hamilton Beach area. But your name's right here on the mailbox! That's how I tracked you down! My last name is pretty common. I read somewhere that it's one of the top 10 names in the US. I bet there are dozens of people in that area with my first and last name. 
Uh, you're kidding me, right? You're not pulling a fast one on me now, are you? Now, why would I do that? I have no reason to lie to you. If you're making a scene in front of some stranger's house, I suggest you leave before they call the police. That was a close call. I talked my way out of it. I said I was lost. That guy was about to call the cops on me. So, Melanie, what's this all about? Pardon me? Why did you come all the way out east to find me? Were you just curious to see where I lived? Well, I figured, you know, you're not getting any younger. Maybe you wanted us to live with you. I mean, with your grandson and all. Live with me? You want to move in with me? Yeah, your husband's past, living all alone. Figured you'd want some company. I really don't need a total stranger to be concerned about my well-being. But you're living alone and... I didn't mention this before, but I plan on living with my other son. My real son and his family. I you have a son? You mean... Yes, we're planning on constructing a two-family home not far from here. We'll live separately, but live on the same property. Kind of like the arrangement we had before, but more spacious. Oh, wait a minute. You're talking about Rob and his family. Family being me and your grandson. Why didn't Rob tell me? What a relief. But if that's your plan, I would appreciate it if you could maybe stay at that nice little summer home and have my folks move into this new house. Now that would be the best outcome possible. There you go again, Melanie, always coming to hasty conclusions. I said my real son. I wasn't talking about Rob. Not your... not Rob. Wait a sec, what? I have a 28-year-old son from a previous marriage. I suppose that makes him Rob's younger stepbrother. I talked to Rob about this already. I told him I was going to live with my real son and his family. Oh, and they have a two-year-old daughter. You already have a grandchild? Didn't I tell you this before? I thought I did. Uh, did you? I don't recall. Oh, and didn't Rob file for divorce? Uh, who told you? I don't live with Rob anymore, as you know, but I do keep in touch with him. Despite what you think, Rob and I are on good terms. We've always seen eye to eye. The reason he filed for divorce is mainly because of your infidelity. When did you find out about... I know a lot more than you think, Melanie. Including the fact that the child you gave birth to was not Rob's at all. Rob confided in me that he has no idea who the father is. The DNA test proves it's not his. Uh, when did you talk to him about... No use trying to deny it, Melanie. He told me everything. But there must be something. I better get going. I'm having some friends over this afternoon. Please, Mom, Judith, please. I have nowhere to live. Goodbye forever, Melanie. Please, Mom. I later learned that she came looking for my summer home in Hamilton Beach area with her parents in tow. It seems the four of them were left with nowhere to live. I guess they figured that if they rushed to my home in Hampton Beach, which is not where I live, somehow they would be able to move in, at least for a while. I think their intention was to somehow kick me out and take over the house. Why they thought that, I have no idea. As a result of their misguided pipe dream, they were left homeless. They were lucky they had their grandchild with them because a nearby relative took pity on them and put them up for a few nights. But word spread of their antics among the relatives and eventually, sad to say, the child was put up for adoption. I hear they worked out some deal with a relative who owns a ranch out in Montana. They were allowed to live in a converted barn for the foreseeable future. It's apparently a pretty hard life on a farm. But evidently, they are trying to make ends meet as best they can.
You'll attend Rachel's wedding, right? Make sure that you wear a lot of makeup and buy yourself a nice dress. Otherwise, you'll stand out among the other beautiful guests. You need to try to cover up your ugliness. Please don't embarrass our family. I do plan on going to Rachel's wedding. Do you have a problem with my usual makeup? I'm a little surprised. Because most people look nice when they wear makeup. The makeup isn't doing anything for you. And why are you so confident about your looks? If I had your face, I'd make more of an effort to look prettier. I can't change the way that I look, and you're being hurtful as always. I'm going to Rachel's wedding, so what is the problem here? I'm worried that you're going to embarrass us at the wedding, that's all. I'm married to Sean, but that doesn't mean that I get along with you. You're not related, so you don't have to tell anyone at Rachel's wedding that we're family. Shouldn't you make more of an effort to get along with me? I've tried. You just don't want to let me in or accept me for who I am. You just need to promise me that you won't do anything to embarrass me or Rachel at her wedding. I'm going to avoid you at the wedding so that people don't know we're family. You should do the same. Fine, but I just think that you're being really rude. You only care about your own feelings. I don't know how Sean's been putting up with you this whole life. Shut up. If you make any more rude comments to me, I'm going to get Sean to divorce you. I don't think that Sean would agree to that. Sean's an adult. He's not going to take your advice on what to do with his marriage. Besides, he's happy being married to me. I mean, if he were the type of person to get his own mother to make important life decisions for him, I wouldn't want to stay married to him. Well... If you make fools out of us, I'm going to suggest to Sean that he divorce you. I'm sure that if I told him the reasons why I wanted him to leave you, he'd choose me over you. To be honest, we all want you to get divorced. Okay, okay, you told me this so many times. You have nothing to worry about. I won't do anything to embarrass you at Rachel's wedding. I assure you of that. Even if you don't do anything, your presence in of itself is an embarrassment to this family. Well, I can't do anything about that then. I'm busy, so I'm going to go now. Well, you can pick me up tomorrow. Well, why would you need me to do that? Isn't it your wedding day? It is. But I'm out drinking with friends now, and I don't think that I'll be able to wake up early and take myself to the venue. You're coming to the wedding anyway, so it won't be a problem for you, right? I am, but I need time in the morning to get ready for your reception. I also have an appointment at the hairdresser to get my hair done. Nobody is going to care about how you look. Don't you think that it's more important for the bride to arrive at the venue on time? You're rude, just like your mother. Can't you ask your parents or your fiancé instead? They aren't able to pick me up, which is why I'm asking you to do it. Besides, I don't want my family to know that I'm out drinking the night before my wedding. I'm the bride. You need to listen to me. It's my big day. Okay, fine, if you insist. Where should I meet you tomorrow morning, then? Come pick me up at my parents' place. I'm supposed to spend the night there tonight. Well, if you're staying with your parents, can't you head to the wedding venue with them, then? Actually, my parents are staying at a hotel tonight, close to the wedding venue. Then why don't you stay at the hotel with them? Wouldn't that be more practical? 
Everyone thinks that I'll be staying at the hotel too, but I have my reasons for not going there. So can you take me to the hotel tomorrow morning instead of directly to the wedding venue? I don't understand the situation. Rachel, what's going on? Tonight is my bachelorette party, and I want to party hard before getting married. And I don't want my parents to get in the way of that. You understand that, right? I think that I see what you're doing here. You're making everyone stay at a hotel so you can do whatever you want on your last night being single. And you're going to pretend that you stayed at a hotel and go to the wedding with the rest of your family, right? That's right. You have your own car, so why can't you drive to the hotel yourself? I told my parents that I'd go to the hotel by train, so they'd get suspicious if I took the car. I see, then why don't you take a taxi? Uh, a taxi is going to be expensive. It'll be much cheaper if you came and picked me up. Thanks, and see you tomorrow. So you're giving me no choice in the matter, then? Yes. Please come pick me up at 7 a.m. because I'm supposed to have breakfast with my family at 8 at the hotel. That's pretty early, but fine. I'm only doing you this one favor because it's your wedding day. I'm never going to do something like this for you ever again. Where are you? I heard that you were in a car accident. Yes, that's right. I'm in the hospital right now. So it's true then. You got into an accident. I did, and I'm injured pretty badly. How can you do this to us? What do you mean? Are you saying that I purposely got myself into an accident? You're still going to make it to the wedding, though, right? What? It's Rachel's wedding today. You can't not be there. What will people think? The accident wasn't my fault. Another car crashed into me and just ran from the scene. I'm in a lot of pain right now. There's no way that I'll be able to attend the wedding in my condition. You can't cancel on us at the last minute. We need you at the wedding. But you told me before that you didn't want to see my ugly face at the wedding. I don't think that anyone will miss seeing me today. You just want to embarrass our entire family. You're so selfish. If you're not coming to this wedding, I won't consider you a part of the family anymore. You're not really making any sense to me right now, but whatever. Are you going to force me to go to the wedding with my injuries? I can't even walk without crutches right now. Well, you can still limp. You're unbelievable. I would say this is abuse. If you don't want Sean to divorce you, I suggest you come to this wedding. Why do I have to be punished with divorce just because I can't make it to one wedding? It's important for our family. Rachel is getting married, and as my son's wife, you should be there. How can you threaten someone who's just been in a car accident? Don't you have any compassion? You're a terrible person. I have broken bones and I'm not well. So what? Who cares about a few broken bones? Today is Rachel's big day. I am not going to let you miss that. I don't want to hear any excuses from you. You need to come to the wedding. Fine, I'll come to the wedding, since it seems that I have no choice in the matter. I'm going to punch you in the face if you're late. See, I understand. The wedding starts in an hour. Hurry up. I'm on my way, but I'm not responsible for what happens next. What? is your problem i'm furious how dare you how is this my fault i went to the wedding like you asked me to what is the problem 
You said that if I didn't come to the wedding, you'd make Sean divorce me. I didn't think that you'd actually come to the wedding limping and all bloody. The other wedding guests were in shock. Yeah, I saw that. When they found out that Rachel was the one that crashed into my car and ran away from the scene. I'm sure that they can't stop talking about it. Are you shocked too? Of course I am. And you didn't have to tell everyone what Rachel did. How could you do this to us? Everyone was asking me about what happened to me, so I just told everyone the truth. I didn't do anything wrong. Would have been wrong of me to lie. Rachel's the one who committed the crime here. She should be arrested. How can you try to blame this on me? I had no idea that Rachel did that to you. That's why I wanted you to come to the wedding. Had I known, I would have never asked you to come. Well, it was Rachel's responsibility to tell you what happened. And as her mother, you're responsible too. Rachel was the one that asked me to pick her up by car at your house this morning. I parked my car in front of your house and was waiting when Rachel crashed into my car. I don't know whose car it was, but Rachel was speeding. She was driving under the influence and broke my bones. I should have never married into this family. You give me nothing but bad luck. I know that you're making this all up. Rachel was staying at the hotel with us last night. She couldn't have been out drinking. How can you be so sure that she stayed at the hotel? You didn't see her until breakfast this morning. And Rachel's fiancé told me that he hadn't seen her last night at the hotel. I went to your house to pick up Rachel because she asked me to. She basically gave me no choice. I can show you her text messages if you don't believe me. She told me that since it was her last night being single, she wanted to party with her friends. She drank too much and stayed out until the morning, which is why she rushed home in her car. So it really was Rachel that hit you then? She caused a hit and run? But did you have to air our dirty laundry to all our wedding guests? Was that really necessary? You forced me to come to the wedding. People were going to ask me questions. I had no choice. I didn't want to attend the wedding. I should have stayed at the hospital to rest and recover. I went because you wanted me to. Why aren't you more grateful? Why do I have to be grateful? As Sean's wife, you're obligated to attend big family events. We had to cancel the wedding midway because of all the chaos that you caused. I'm angry, if anything. You ruined Rachel's wedding. It was the groom that asked to cancel the wedding. It had nothing to do with me. Person you should be blaming is your daughter, Rachel. I'm the victim here. I think that you and Rachel owe me an apology at the very least. I'm never gonna forgive you for any of this. I want you to divorce Sean. I never considered you family and we're officially breaking up with you. I don't care because I feel the same. I agree that it's best for me to break up with your family. What the hell? Sean is in complete agreement with me. We're cutting all ties with you. What are you saying? I'm talking about you divorcing Sean. At first, Sean didn't know what was going on, but when I explained everything to him, he's livid with the way that you and the rest of the family have been treating me. He's the only responsible one in your family. What Rachel did to me is a crime, and instead of worrying about the fact that your daughter is now a criminal, you're trying to blame the whole thing on me. Sean and I are making the right choice in cutting all ties with you. But Sean is my son. You can't let him make the mistake of cutting ties with his own family. You're being selfish. I think that you and Rachel are the selfish ones here. The police are on their way now, and they're going to arrest Rachel. And her fiancé was wise for cancelling the wedding. I'm sure that he's not going to marry Rachel after this. Who's gonna pay the cancellation fees? The groom has already returned all the wedding gifts and congratulatory gifts and money. It's not the groom's fault. No one wants to marry a criminal. 
I think it makes sense for your family to pay the cancellation fees. It was lucky for him that he and Rachel weren't legally married yet. How can you say that? Don't you feel sorry for Rachel? You're a part of this family. I've never considered you family and after what Rachel did to me, I'm cutting you out of my life. I mean, you're the one that told me that I didn't belong in this family in the first place. You wanted to kick me out from the day that Sean and I got married. So can you stop saying that we're family only when it serves you a purpose? I've had enough of your bullshit. Sean and I want nothing to do with this family anymore. As for your husband, he found out about the way that you've been mistreating me all this time and he's not happy about it. Don't bring my husband into this. Don't mess with my family any more than you already have. I don't need to do anything. Your husband and the rest of your family were at the wedding and they know what Rachel did to me. It's up to him with what he wants to do now and he knows everything. Melanie, I think you need to calm down. I think that we should sit down face to face and have a talk. There isn't anything that I'd like to discuss with you. I don't want anything to do with you. You failed as a mother and you need to take some responsibility for what Rachel did. And Rachel needs to pay for what she did to me. Goodbye now. It was nice knowing you. You said that I was an embarrassment to the family, but look how your real daughter turned out. Helen was horrified and embarrassed because in the end, Rachel was arrested and news about the arrest and cancellation of the wedding spread fast. Because she was so oblivious to what was going on around her, she ended up ruining her life. The rest of her family and relatives cut her off completely and she was forced to live the life of a recluse. Her husband divorced her as well. At first, Helen tried to rely on her son Sean and his wife Melanie. But for obvious reasons, they completely shut her out. She has nowhere to go now and no family to depend on and we can only imagine that a life of despair awaits Helen. She did this to herself, if only she had been shrewd about her decisions. But it's too late to regret it now because the damage has already been done.